course, two-day event dealing with all things related to cosmetic surgery and procedures. It's Laura. You're very welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I you. have to say, there's one thing that annoys me more than anything else in this country. You have these people on Instagram, they are so, and I'm so fresh-faced, and I look great for my age, and blah, 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 blah. I just bought this cream. And I see people I know well flogging creams on Instagram yeah. and saying that's why they have no wrinkles on their face. And I know damn well they're full of Botox and fillers and things like that, because no one will admit it. What is wrong with admitting you've had stuff done? Why do we still feel so there's such a stigma attached to it? There, I, I personally, I think there's nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, I definitely think the younger generation are much more open about it, and they're much if they almost wear as a, a badge of pride. Yeah. My generation, I'm 40. They're, they're it's still a bit like cloak and dagger, like oh gosh, she had anything to admit or not. Yeah. And now the WhatsApp groups have evolved. Do you know what I mean? And people are talking about it more. But even a few years ago, all my friends were all lying to each other. Yeah. You know, this is my best friend. It's like I've had a peel, and you're like, I know you're lying. <laughs> no peel did that to your face. No yeah. peel got rid of those crow's feet. But it's like ridiculous to think that. Oh, oh yeah. And like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, people are doing it on their lunch times, they're doing it every day. But the lack of regulation, I suppose, in this, mm -hmm. this country is still fairly frightening. We have all seen the disasters, the three for two injectables on the yeah. high street. People are coming with their lip, lips practically ulcerating from mm -hmm. dodgy fillers. Yeah. Goes in from here up and wrinkle from there down. I mean, there's no actual standard here in this country no, that you can wait. No. So that is a huge problem. It's the intense why we're doing the show. Yeah. The show, the whole pr premise of the show is education, first and foremost. It's not about telling people to go out and look, you know, perfect or anything like that. It's to educate women and men, but predominantly women who are in this industry, um, about what a what's available because a lot of people don't realise what the breadth of products or treatments and procedures available for every given concern. Yeah. There's so much available. Uh, B, if you are going to go down the route of any of them, whether it's as simple as getting, maybe getting your red veins lasered off or for me right up to the other end of maybe having a mummy makeover, yeah. you really need to know what you're getting yourself in for. And I see surgery at the end of the day, but the other extreme of it, it is surgery. Somebody it's very thought. based on each and every circumstance. Well, the surgery is, at least the surgery is in one respect regulated because generally it's done by one of the IOPS members, the Irish Association of Plastic Surgeons, and they're all very, very highly educated. Most of them will have had done a fellowship and so forth. So that's probably one of the fewer areas in the industry that is it's a little bit safer. A then. little bit safer, actually. Where you have to have actual breast augmentation as well. You do. Well, not no. So you don't have to be a member of the IOPS to, yeah. to be able to perform a breast augmentation. 